here. There we go. All right, very good. So first of all, I want to thank everyone for joining. And um, if you're new to my channel, I hope that you'll subscribe. So I uh, do uh, weekly, uh, sometimes more often than once a week, do live streams and do also uh, standard videos. So I'm super excited to have you here. And uh, let's go ahead and get started in our topic. So what I want to show you is, this is a watercolor that I did. When you talk about beginner watercolors, you can go something very abstract like this, um, just kind of a fun explosion of color. Do something like what I did. This is a watercolor I did several years ago. And uh, this has got a little bit more controlled um, paint flow. But what I love about watercolors is the ability to put uh, water or paint down and you get this wonderful flow and this wonderful um, movement of um, the water and there's kind of some happy accidents or happy surprises sometimes that happen and part of uh, doing watercolor uh, you can also do very tight watercolor but part of doing watercolor is just letting the pigment do its thing and um, and that's a lot of fun so in order to get started with watercolor watercolor is one of the easiest things to get into in art um, besides drawing drawing you just need a pencil and some paper but with um, when you have uh, the um, watercolor you can just start with these little kits like this these little pan kits and I think probably all of us saw these kits when we were uh, young and in school and this is called a pan because the stuff sits in the pan and it's a uh, semi dry or dry pigment in with a binder and then you add your water in and that's how you get it so you can get it onto your paper and then the other thing that that uh, we have and oh is uh, let me grab this over here. The other thing that you can use with watercolor are tubes. So tube watercolor. And uh, thank you for joining. I see that you're here. Hey, Carrie, good to see you. And I enjoyed seeing you over on Chrissy's uh, live stream earlier. That was wonderful. So um, there are a lot of different brands of uh, tube watercolor. A lot of people think that watercolor just only comes in these little squares, like what we're used to. And these are you can get low quality and high quality paint in these pans and you can get lower quality and high quality paint in the tubes. It just it depends on what you as an artist enjoy working with, what is, um, what's your style, that kind of thing. Let me uh, show you a minute here. This, this set of paint I have here, let me bring this forward. And Carrie, are you having a good day? What's the weather like over by you? It was nice. Yeah, your phone died earlier. Well, I'm hoping it's, uh, I'm hoping it's fixed for you now. That's good. Because it's always frustrating if the phone dies, right? So um, what I want to show you here is a, um, one of the ways that you can organize your watercolors. When you get started watercolor painting, you really only need a few things. So you'll need uh, the paint itself, obviously. And you're going to need to have uh, paper. It's pretty cold now. Well, I'm in Iowa. What, uh, where are you, Carrie? Where are you located out of? It's, it's, I'll say it's cold here for Iowa, but it's, we don't really have any snow yet. We're supposed to get snow um, later today or tomorrow. Um, but anyway, um, so, so the paint, you need uh, paint itself. You're going to need brushes, and we'll go through and talk about brushes. We're going to talk about the different types of paper. How do you know what kind of paper you have? You're in South Texas. Okay. Well, um, my husband and I used to live in Dallas, Texas. And uh, hey, Homa. How are you? Hugs to you. Um, uh, Carrie, my husband and I used to live in Dallas, Texas when we first got married. And I remember it, it could get kind of cold in Dallas in the wintertime. So, um, so let's talk about, uh, oh, and also today we're going to talk about watercolor pencils and um, how to use those. Um, how to, what kind of containers you might store your water in, uh, how to use salt, uh, salt and different type of resist things. I've got here uh, some masking fluid. We'll talk about that. Basically all the kind of things that you might want to know uh, when you're 57 degrees. Oh, that is cold. Oh my goodness. Um, all the kind of things that you might need when you're starting out. Uh, from the beginning and then also when you want to get a little bit more fancy or get more materials. So 
So uh, this is a paint tray, and how this works is you take uh, the, the tube of paint, and then you'll put that in, and then you add water to it. So I'll just show you with a, um, a little bit of this color we have there. This is Windsor Yellow from Windsor Noon. And I'll just put this in here and show you how this works. When it comes out of the tube, it comes out looking almost like uh, acrylic paint or like uh, oil paint, but it, it does not act like it. So, uh, hey, Erica. How are you, Erica? And I just talk, uh, talked to Erica on the phone. She and I are planning a collaboration that um, we're going to be doing here later in winter. And I'm super excited to have uh, Erica on here. And Erica, you are a master watercolor painter, so um, you can be sure to weigh in on any of the discussions here. Um, I just put a little bit of the, the Windsor & Newton uh, watercolor here. Just put a little bit of that into the pan. And what I'm gonna do now is this is just a water dropper with just plain water. And I'm just putting a small amount of the water in and what's gonna happen is that's just gonna kind of dissolve and I can then use the paint. I could use it actually as it stands like this and just put a small amount on. It will be super concentrated. I wanna avoid doing that though because um, I want it to be mixed with some of the water uh, so that it flows and really so that we get the idea of the water. Yeah, Windsor and, and, and Newton, isn't it wonderful, Erica? And Erica, what brands, do you have certain brands that you prefer? I guess we can talk a little bit about brands. Uh, put in the chat, if you would, Erica. And I also wanna hear, too, um, from anybody at Homa, if you have some brands that you like. Um, let's also hear Carrie, anybody else watching. If you, I see there are more than uh, whatever. If you want to uh, speak in the, in the chat or you wanna be more quiet, either way is great. I'd love to hear your opinions, it's always fun. It makes it fun to interact. Or you can just watch too, that, that works too. So uh, these are Holbein. Uh, this is a leaf green from Holbein. And then uh, these are watercolor essentials from Royal, Ta uh, uh, Royal ne Lag and Nickel. And I know, um, Erica, that you like Royal um, Lang Nickel. I know that you like the, um, their brushes. And you're saying uh, beginners, oh, the Windsor Newton Cotton and Sakurai Koi uh, watercolors. Okay, that's good, that's very good. And some people are shy, yeah, it's true. And some people like to be more quiet and you know, everyone is welcome here. So then I've also got, uh, here's the Shihan Premium watercolor. So I have a lot of different brands here in my little container and I uh, like to just not be necessarily specific to one brand versus another. But uh, it's important to also talk about with um, if you are used to or if you have done painting in acrylic or in oil and you want to start using watercolor, it is important to note that watercolor has to be, uh, you have to put, since you're painting on paper, you need to be putting a uh, plexiglass or glass or have it framed in some way if you want it to stay for a long, long time and keep the work because works on paper uh, can be more fragile than works on canvas. Works on canvas uh, can, you know, last, well, centuries. And works on paper a little bit more fragile, but um, that, that does not stop us from doing <laughs> works on paper because their watercolor is so much fun. And schminky, you also like schminky? Oh yes, absolutely. Oh, and Joy, how, how are you? Good to see you. And um, Joy, I wanna say, do you pronounce it Joy to Fi, Joy to Fi, or Joy to Fi. I want you to, can you maybe put it out there phonetically because I always just call you Joey. And, um, oh, okay, Joey. All right, Joey. And then how do you say the last part? De de like defy or defi? So type that in, let me know, because I want to be sure I'm pronouncing it properly. But, um, but anyway, the, uh, the paint, uh, watercolor is a little bit different in its chemical nature than, than say, acrylic or oils in that um, there, the acrylic has a, um, I guess I don't know the right words for it, but basically um, you have to protect the surface of the watercolor because if it gets wet, 
if you get an oil painting wet or an acrylic painting wet after it's dry, it actually doesn't hurt it. Okay, Defee. Ah, okay, Joey Defee. All right, very good. Okay, like fee fi fo fum. I'll have to remember it like that, fee. F, like F-E-E, -E. Joey Defee. Okay, thank you, Joey. So, um, if you, but if you get watercolor wet, then your paper off the top. So, um, so it is important after you're done to get it protected. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about that too. I've got, I'll show you some mats. So here is a, a watercolor painting that I did uh, some time ago, and I've stored it in a, uh, what's this is an archival acid-free mat. Oh, look at this. I got a little of the yellow on here. Let's wipe that off. And you know my mother, Helen Schaefer, she's gonna say that I have to get it wiped off right away, right? Right, Mama? If you, <laughs> when you watch later, we'll just dip in the water. And look at that, it's gone. Okay, so, um, and this is also a way um, that I, uh, on the back of my paintings, I will uh, have a certificate of authenticity on the back of my watercolors and uh, put the title, the painting size, what size frame it fits within, and then my signature. And so, hey Chrissy, how are you? Glad that you're here and I loved your stream today. And it, you know what, uh, Joey, it is. It's clearly a day for artists on YouTube. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely, it's great to have everybody watching and everybody here. Um, so, so what this, uh, what this mat is, is uh, when you get mats, you wanna be sure to use an acid-free mat. And then this is just sitting in a plastic sleeve. We'll take it out of the sleeve so you can see. So if you get these, um, these sleeves, they're really nice for protecting. And actually, I'm not gonna lift it out. I don't wanna get fingerprints on my mat. But, um, but they're really nice until somebody has their um, item framed. It's a nice way you can just uh, keep these things um, on the shelf or in a drawer, that kind of thing. And, um, and yeah, <laughs> and, um, and Erica paints with oils too, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and I think you, don't you also do acrylics too, Erica? I think I've seen you do acrylics. I think you do all three, the trifecta, right? So I'm gonna also show you a little, another little watercolor that I did. So you can get, some people will think that watercolors are only super light, you can only just like light and um, washed out kind of a thing, but you can get really intense pigmentation. Um, so hey Gray, hey great to see you. Thank you for joining. Um, you can get this uh, really intense pigment that you see here. And you know what, I just set this on here. I bet I set this on our yellow again, let's see. And sure enough I did, there it is. <laughs> you know, I have to stop setting things on the yellow. Look what I'm doing. I'm just going to wipe that off. And this will be our first uh, testimonial to show how if you get watercolor where you don't want it, you can just scrub it off and then it's gone. Okay, so there we go. All right, and I'm also going to dab this off and dry it because I don't want my paper to warp underneath. So let me just get this dry, just scrub that guy out. All right, we're good as new. Very good. Okay, so let's talk a little bit now about, so we talked a little bit about paint, but what's important to talk now about is paper. So if you are a beginning watercolor artist, um, then you might be wondering, you know, what is all, what, what does it mean when I hear about these different papers? So I'm gonna grab some watercolor paper and I'm gonna hold it up kind of close. Can you see that there's a texture on this watercolor paper? This little size is a five by seven, but if you look closely, can you see that? This is a cold pressed paper. So, um, so cold pressed, there are two types, well, really three types of paper, uh, well, not paper, but painting surface. There's uh, something called UPO, Y-U-P-O, and then there is uh, standard watercolor paper, which is what this is, and uh, you can either get it hot pressed or cold pressed. And Erica says that paper was the most tricky thing. Yeah, and isn't that crazy? And so we're, today we are gonna demystify all of the paper discussion. So it's actually really simple. And um, I'm gonna just write a couple things on here for you. Let me grab this paper. Here's just a little, um, I like to just kind of doodle on paper, so with watercolor. I'm gonna show you how to cut 
how to tear your water paper. You see this edge here is called decal. This is a decorative edge or a deckled edge. And then there's a cut edge. Um, a lot of times people like that decorative deckled edge. And I'll show you. I'm just going to manhandle this thing. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh, Carrie, that's fine. Oh, that's terrible. Okay, ink tents. Okay, so um, you like in in ink tents. I have never heard of ink tents, Chrissy. That is, uh, tell me a little bit more about it. I want to hear, I'll, when I go back and read the chat then later, I want to uh, read that and I'll look it up on the internet. But uh, if you want to take your watercolor, so let's say I just want to take this thing and cut it in half. It's super easy. You do a fold first and you squish it down and get a hard crease and then you start at the top and then you just kind of uh, tear it like this, just like so. And then you can get a pleasing edge on there. There we go. Okay, so we're going to write. I'm going to use this one to write on. This is, so within paper, There are, there's a thing called UPO, and I want you guys to write in, has anybody used UPO? So intense pencils and blocks, watercolor, but permanent one dry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's good. Oh, and you left the window open. Okay, I love it. <laughs> I love it, Carrie, you are devoted. It's excellent, it's excellent. Okay, UPO, if anybody's ever used UPO, what it is, it's a painting surface, it's not paper, it's a synthetic, and you paint on it, and you can wipe off over and over and over and there's never any problem with that. And then you have what's called traditional paper. Traditional watercolor paper. So within that you have what's called cold press and there's a thing called hot press. So you're going to know all about paper here. Um, it's, it's super easy. Uh, hot press, the difference between hot press and cold press is hot press has literally been pressed with a hot, uh, it's, it's been pressed at the paper manufacturer. It has been pressed and it has a smooth surface. And uh, Erica, you've never used UPO. Okay, yeah, I have a friend who uses UPO. And, um, and then uh, Chrissy, you said that you have Backing for cold press. Okay, yeah, excellent. All right, so um, so the hot press has got a very smooth surface, and it also is known to dry more quickly than a cold press paper. Now, a cold press paper is made literally uh, paper. What paper consists of? In this case, this is called cotton rag. Um, this is an Arches. Um, uh, they have a little embossed thing on here. This is 130 pound cold press paper but the cold press paper is uh, it's got a rough texture and it's a little bit more scrubbable and it's got a little bit more rough of a texture so uh, then you might be wondering when I said um, oh um, it's a certain number of pounds what the pound uh, ranking or the pound rating is on paper uh, they what they do is they take 500 sheets and a full size sheet of watercolor paper, uh, they have a specific size. A full size of the press, the watercolor press is 22 inches times 30 inches. And that's called a full sheet, or it's also known as an imperial size. So that's a 22 by 30. So um, from that, you can guess that a half sheet, what a half sheet was going to be, so a half is going to be a uh, 22 by 15 is a half sheet. But they take 500 sheets and then your weight is 500 sheets stacked weight. So if I were to go and take um, these, it has to all be full size sheets. So if I took um, these 22 by 30 full size sheets 
And um, so, oh, Chrissy, thank you for saying that. Thank you. So I take uh, 500, a whole giantly large stack of these 500, uh, you know, these are, I can't fit them under the camera. They're just, you know, really big. Get 500 of them up and put them on a scale. That's going to be the weight of the paper. So, uh, so there are three typical, now they, there's always exception, but there are three typical standard weights. 30 pound, or sorry, 30, 90 pound, 140 pound, and 300 pound. So what that means then is uh, working from the idea of taking 500 pieces of paper, putting them on the scale, and, um, and so the, the lightest ones are only going to weigh 90 pounds. And so you can imagine from that 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 means that they're thinner and uh, more flexible, but thinner and uh, the weight of it is thinner. Um, so, and then there's the, um, oh, 130 pound, 140 pound, there's also 130 pound too. There, there, there's a, a variety of those in here. And then you can also get like a 400 pound, that kind of thing, but these are kind of the industry standards. And then there's a 300 pound. So the 300 pound is like heavy, 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 heavy. Um, it is, you saw how I like took the sheet and then like, you know, like moved it down to, to um, cut it in half. Uh, the 300 pound is very, very thick and um, very heavy and it can, ten, it can take a lot of scrubbing. So, um, and we all do learn from different artists. Yes, absolutely. And thank you for saying that also too. So the, the idea is when you, so it's, it's actually rather simple. When you go to buy your watercolor paper, you first want to think about what size you want. So you can buy books of watercolor paper, uh, you know, that are say eight by 10 or uh, eight, 24 by 18, 16 by 20, whatever you like, and you can get them all in a stack or you can go buy individual sheets at the art supply store. And when you buy the individual sheets, you can then go in and, um, and then decide. And, and also the paper, when you buy it in the, you know, as a book of paper, then, uh, then you just tear it off of the thing and, and then you can choose, do I want to get, these are going to be cheaper. The, the cheaper the paper is typically, the lighter the weight it is. And the lighter the weight it is means the less scrubbing or rubbing or that kind of thing that you can do to it. So, um, oh, and thank you so much for saying that, Carrie. I, I, uh, okay, well, printer paper. So the question is, is uh, and that's actually a great question. Um, so Casey brings up, or Carrie, how do I say Casey? Oh, I did it again, Carrie. <laughs> I did it again. Oh my gosh, Carrie. You know, you think after about 10 or 15 times, I would say, say it right. I have it in my mind that you're Casey. Oh, my goodness, Carrie. All right, Carrie. So the question is, why don't we just use printer paper? Why don't we just use uh, notebook paper, maybe a little bit thicker paper, that kind of thing? And I'll say, um, you forgot your own name. <laughs> yeah. Um, the reason for that is because watercolor paper is specially constructed so that you can put the pigment on it and it is going to be number one it's going to be archival uh, so uh, printer paper that kind of thing typically has acid in it and if you've uh, seen like old newspapers that kind of thing old newspapers uh, they get yellow and they actually will fall apart and decompose very rapidly um, and and that's the thing that you want is you want your paper to be specifically for watercolor uh, because when you put your art on it, you want to use that and then use um, acid-free materials um, when, you're, when you're doing that. So, um, but that's the, that's the deal with paper. It's actually, it's, it's nothing more tricky than that. It's you just decide you want uh, either UPO or traditional paper. And if you want to use your, uh, uh, your traditional paper, you wanna either use it as the cold press or the hot press. And all, you, all this is, is the hot press is just going to be smooth, completely smooth, and the cold press is going to have a texture. And I personally uh, like the texture. I like the feeling and the, and the look of the texture. Uh, so I, I always usually go with the cold press. I get the 130 or 140 pound paper. That's just my personal preference. 
Um, and then again, that weight um, is just a simple calculation that the paper manufacturers use when they um, get the paper onto their press. And, um, and the paper talk, yes, and we all, we're all kind of like art nerds here, aren't we? So, and then uh, Erica, you're talking about water-soluble paints um, require paper that can tolerate water and normal paper isn't made to take water. That's exactly it, yes, absolutely. And so when we're taking the time to make art, um, it's important to get it onto the right kind of materials so that it will work. So, uh, so okay, so that's paper. Let me set this over here. And I also want to show you, in case anybody is wondering here, um, and you use coloring books and only can be, okay. Yeah, and that's the thing is, um, when you're using the uh, coloring books, that type of thing, you want to do ones that can take the paint or can take, um, take a scrubbing. And, and um, sometimes it's, you know, you get what you pay for kind of a thing, I guess. But if anybody is wondering, I have a Amazon, um, I'm an Amazon influencer. If you go to my shop, um, it's amazon.com slash shop slash Dina underscore Tollefson, D-E-N-A underscore T-O-L-L-E-F-S-O-N. I have all the supplies that we're talking about today. I have all of these supplies, um, paints, masking, watercolor pencils, watercolor paint, books, easels, all that kind of stuff. Um, if you go out and give me a little love here on Amazon and also, um, you have to type the whole thing in. You can't just search under Amazon for my name. You have to type it all the way in. Um, I am compensated by Amazon, but it's of no additional cost to you. So, um, so I would appreciate it if you get a chance to pop out there. But, uh, but what I want to talk a little bit about now is uh, watercolor pencils. So watercolor pencils, if this is your first time, art nerds, <laughs> yeah, it, it's true. Oh my goodness, and thank you, Carrie. All right, so, um, so, so watercolor pencils are an important uh, tool in any watercolor artist's um, wheelhouse. Um, and I'm gonna show you here. And again, my mother will be pleased because mama, I'm getting out the pencil sharpener. Oh, and thank you for saying that, Erica. I appreciate you saying that. Okay, so I'm just gonna take, this is our, um, our magenta pencil, but you see that you've gotta, it's just a really easy to sharpen these things. So don't, you don't have to be intimidated about it. If you've ever used eyebrow pencil or um, lip pencil, um, or if you've just sharpened a pencil, you just get these little pencils, pencil sharpener, just, this is just a little simple little thing, and I'm gonna sharpen this guy too. Super easy to keep that pencil sharp, and then you've got a nice edge. There we go. I see my yellow needs some here. But Derwent makes these wonderful pencils. Has anybody ever um, made paper? Um, okay, uh, Gray, I have a wonderful um, artist friend, Dawn Wolford Metallo. She's the director of the um, Quad City Arts where um, they, uh, she represents my work in, in uh, Rock Island, Illinois. She is a paper artist, and she has, I'm just gonna toss this in the trash here. Um, uh, Dawn Wolford Metallo makes paper out of all kinds of things, and then she makes uh, fiber sculptures. And so she recently had some fiber sculptures that went up into a hospital um, in their permanent collection. But yeah, paper is a lot of fun. So you make it and you love it. Oh my gosh. Now what uh, what do you typically use, Gray? Are you using cotton or are you using wool or what do you use to make your paper? Let us know. I am curious to see that. Okay, so anyway, these um, back to the pencils. Oh, let's talk about pencils. I got distracted by uh, thinking about paper. Okay, and then, um, yeah, okay. So, so these Derwent pencils, um, and different brands are out there, all kinds of different companies make wonderful pencils. Um, and for those of you that use watercolor pencils, tell me, are you using the wood type or do you like the woodless type? I know that there are both out there, um, but I'm curious to see what your opinions are. So these happen to be the wood pencils. This is my mother's set, and she graciously allows me to use her watercolor pencils. And I'm a little bit obsessed with them, and Mama, yes, I do. 
I do love your pencils and I'm taking very good care of them. So how these pencils work, and let's just grab a little scrap here. Just gonna, let's just work with this one. And, um, and then before we go any further too, I wanna just say for these little uh, pieces here, oh no, 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 Gray, you didn't. It was actually a good distraction. I, no, I want you to distract me. I want to, uh, I love that, that, um, that we're having good conversation. That's actually never a distraction. I'm gonna show you how guys how to make, if you don't already do this, let me just show you, and for all beginner watercolors out there. See, so I fold it first, and then I'll go back and fold it again. I'm just gonna show you a fast little way, if you have a party coming up, or you have company coming over, and you wanna make like place cards for people, or you wanna make bookmarks, it is super easy. This is that, uh, you know, 130, 140 pound paper, and um, look how easily it tears. And then you can just make, you know, you can just uh, kind of, we'll just make another one here. And if I was doing this for a uh, dinner party or invitations or something like that, I would actually measure it out a little bit more carefully. I'm just gonna, I'm just kind of, uh, I'm not measuring this out first, but I would actually measure and make them a certain, all the same, all a certain width. Okay, so let's just tear this guy. Whoops. I'm just putting pressure on both sides and just tearing it. But this stuff is really nice for, you know, it's just anything, just like a little pretty thing or you want to write uh, the soldiers. Hey, Chrissy. Okay, <laughs> in Chrissy's stream today, we were talking about um, everything lined up, uh, trees lining up trees, that kind of thing. I would line them up like soldiers. Yes, I would, and I'd have them all identical. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, so, um, and I love it. Uh, everybody on, on this uh, stream is so nice, and I appreciate you guys. And Gray, I want you to write me more stuff because I need to hear more about this paper. I want you to tell me what your, uh, more about your paper. So, uh, so let's say, for example, I was doing a... Uh, Oh, like a bookmark or something like that. I guess to make a bookmark, we would have it a little bit shorter. So let's cut it down. Or if it was going to be like a place card, I do this a lot of times for um, for gifts. Like I might write, you know, to so and so, and then from so and so. But it's just neat, a neat way um, that you can just, you know, do a little uh, thing. So okay, grays use wool, cotton, other mixed fibers. And na oh, natural grass! Oh my gosh, natural grass and flowers and recycled paper. Oh wow! Oh, I bet that's fantastic. That is awesome, Gray. I love it. I love it. Okay, so uh, so let me show you. Let's say that we're using this watercolor pencil. If I wanted to um, watercolor, let's say I'm going to make a um, a gift for Gray. So I'm going to write Gray's name on here. And um, so I could do this with just the watercolor pencil. Let's say I had a, or a bookmark I was giving this as a gift to Gray, or Gray was coming over. And I had a little gift and I want to just put, you know, to Gray from Dina or something like that. So I would just do, just write the name here. And I could either leave it so, I'm gonna put this up close so you can see. So it has kind of a grainy texture. You see the pencil does. And I can activate that with the water. So let me get, um, <laughs> yes. Oh, you have some posted on Instagram. Great, I'm gonna check brush. So we can talk, start talking a little bit about brushes too. This is the Silver Black Velvet series of brushes. And um, oh my gosh, I love these brushes. And what is, uh, what is special about these brushes is that, and I'll just grab a little, this is my little container. Um, what I use, uh, and this is if you're beginning with watercolor, uh, I'll just bring a little container over. This, you see this, um, just a little cascade container, just a recycled container. You can really use anything to hold your water. So what's nice is if you have a clean water, it's gotta be the internet with the time, maybe it's the time of day. So, okay, so can you guys, uh, 
see if well we'll see here all right so back to this when I'm writing with the name you see that I can go in and just use a small amount of water and then I can activate it this way okay oh we're lost here okay I think we're back now I see mine was buffering too it's you know what I think it's the internet is just certain times of the day it wants to go berserk Okay, but see how I can just go in and uh, add a little bit of water, and what that does is that smooths it all out, just like that. So that's, how, that's one way that you can use watercolor pencils. Another way that you can use watercolor pencils, and I'm just going to, I just uh, rinse it in the water when I'm done, is you can use them actually to create an entire, um, oh, I see you too, yes, okay, excellent. And you see your name, Gray, do you see that I wrote? Like, let's say I was doing a little gift for Gray, and then it would be to Gray from Dina or something like that. So, um, so th that's one way that you can use your pencils. The other way that you can use your pencils, and I'm also gonna show you too, I can just flip this around and you, I can use either side. So that's another thing too, is if you have something painted and if you're not really happy with it, you can always flip it on the other side and, and paint the other side. So let me just show you another thing that you can do um, is you can just go in and let's just make a little something. Here, we'll just make a little heart. Let's see if I can do a heart without an outline. Let's try it. And I'm just gonna grab a couple colors here. So just to kind of show you if you wanted to do, if, if paint, the actual paint itself is too scary, you can actually just go and use, uh, use it like you would a colored pencil, and then you can activate it with water. So the difference between a watercolor pencil and a colored pencil is when you get a, a colored pencil, you can use, um, some people will use on a colored pencil, some people will use alcohol or something like that to, um, you know, to get it going, that kind of a thing. But uh, with a watercolor pencil, it's intentionally designed to be used in the way that you would get it wet or you can keep it dry. And I can go and I can make this, um, I'm gonna make one edge of this super, um, I'll say super, not super dark necessarily, but super pigmented. So you can kind of see if you put just a little bit of pigment on or if you put a lot of pigment and let's just go ahead and activate this here I'm just going to activate this one side and it's a little bit um, there we go and if I just put a whole bucket of water here in the middle then it will kind of um, all flow together or so you can see what can happen if you add a considerable amount of water and then you can kind of finesse the edges. But this looks almost as though I had, you know, just gone right into the watercolor pan and, you know, put the color on. So that's how you can get, uh... oh, your phone died. Oh my goodness. Carrie, it's kind of a phone thing today, isn't it? It's a phone and an internet thing. Now, what I can also do, and I'll just move these over here. Let me grab some of the color. So when we first started the stream, get the yellow going here is uh, oh you're back okay awesome so and also thank you everybody by the way for um, for joining me today and I also want to thank you for all the support you've given me on my channel and um, and thank you for the likes too by the way I appreciate it so let me add just a little bit of this yellow so here's the yellow that's literally right out of the tube and then we added a small amount of water to it but um, but do you see that we can also do a layering effect so we can layer, I'm going to get that right up on there. Do you see that we can layer watercolor pencil and just regular watercolor? We can layer them and get all the, you know, any kind of effect that we want. And what I, um, yes, and thank you, Chrissy. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Chrissy. You're so wonderful. Um, so let me just grab also, I love this uh, kind of this turquoisey color. Now this one has gotten dry, so let me just show you what that looks like if you don't put a lot of water on. So I've got, I've got the, 
water over here and I'm just dipping it in here and I've got so a controlled amount of water on the watercolor and I can just uh, put the pigment in and just let it do its thing because that's part of the part of the appeal with watercolor is that it can flow and what you can do is uh, now that you and oh hey Kathleen thank you I'm so glad to have you here it's great and uh, Chrissy I'm so blessed to know you oh my gosh and we are blessed to know Chrissy she is so wonderful and I love you know what I also love is I love Chrissy's accent anybody else charmed by Chrissy's accent her English accent there we go okay so so this is just showing a layering of uh, colored pencils of uh, um, the watercolor pencils traditional watercolor paint and you can really just you know play as much as you like and you can get different effects so we could let that dry and then we can put more things on top um, but I want to show you what happens if there's something that you don't like so let me grab um, I'm going to grab the back of this and I'm going to show you an example of what to do if you um, yes her accent and Rin's accent too yes yeah 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 it's so fabulous and Chrissy's laugh, that's right. And I like when Chrissy talks about her brew, which is actually her cup of tea. That's my favorite. All right, so let me show you uh, what would happen. So let me take the colored, uh, this is again, just our um, colored pencil or our watercolor pencils. Let me show you what happens if we take the watercolor pencil and then what happens if we have something that we don't want. So let's just get some color on here. And then I'll show you what we can do if we have a boo-boo and, and uh, we have a boo-boo and we don't like the result, you know, how would we fix it? Okay, so let's just get this going here. And uh, let's activate that. And the cup was cute, it was a floral cup, yes. And you're having tea now, <laughs> yes, yes. Absolutely. All right, so let's activate this with a little bit of water, and I'm going to just show you what to do if you have something, uh, if you if you get um, paint, like for example, where you don't want it, or uh, you got, felt like the paints got out of control and you need to control it. What are you going to do? So let me grab over here. Let's put a little bit of this color in here. So as a beginning watercolor person, what happened or how would I fix that? So there's several things you do. Your cup is Monet. Yeah. Oh, it really is a Monet? Okay. Well, there you go. And the kindness is contagious. I totally agree, Gray. Absolutely. All right. So let's, uh, let's say I didn't want that dark line down here. How would I get rid of that? So one thing I can do is I can just literally wipe it out. You see, I just take a paper towel and just uh, literally go in and, and wipe it out. And what's really nice about this watercolor paper is that they, have, they say what it is, it's, it's scrubbable. And when they say scrubbable, it's literally what you think it means is it's you can scrub on it. So let me now go in and I'll get it a little bit more wet and what we can do is we can get it all the way down so the goal here is let's say that we don't want any of that black color so we can go in and we can take it out this way or we can use an eraser and so I'm just going to go in demonstrate how you can go back to the white paper if uh, if you've gotten yourself into a fix and you've got a color on there that's just not working for you is that you can just go in and get it erased and normally you'd want to let it dry and do all that but just for demonstration I'm just showing you here what you can do let me just get rid of the little, the little edges here all right and so what you can do is you can just keep working at it and you can get that off and now I'm going to back in and I can just color it with uh, 
let's say I want some of this turquoise. Let me get the color so you can see. So I can just go in and now cover, cover this back up. Let's say I was instead of the black, I meant to use turquoise. Well, now I can put that in and no one will ever know, right? There we go. We can blend the edges by adding a little water and just kind of let it go. There. Okay. So now we've talked a little bit about um, different uh, paints. The paints can come in a, uh, like this, they can come in a pan or they can come in tubes and then you uh, just, you know, squeeze your tube out and, and put it in like that. Then you might wonder, well, what do you do? What happens if this dries out? So if you had acrylic paint or oil paint um, and gray, um, yeah, you can use the eraser method. It's what's really nice, especially if you had like a 300 pound paper, um, you can just get that really scrubbed out no problem at all. Um, the thing is, is you'll, you might see that some of these are like dry and crusty. If this were acrylic paint or oil paint, um, it would be, uh, oh, and, and uh, let's see, Carrie says I have arthritis and mess up, so yeah, but it's, um, if, if you just think of watercolor like it's just a free form thing, I think that's the idea too is, you know, watercolor is so, um, it's, it's very organic in its form. And so when you, when you put it onto the canvas or onto the paper and just kind of let it flow, it, it's kind of fun to just watch that. So the, uh, let's say that this were oil or acrylic. If this had gotten dry, there's no way to bring it back. But that's the great thing about watercolor is that you just add water and just bring it back to life. So I'm just going to add a little bit here, for example, to this purple and a little bit to the green. And again, this is just water in a little, um, little jar. And you can see here that it uh, you can activate it just by adding the water. And then um, if you add enough water or if you just kind of wiggle it around and let it all dissolve, then, um, then it's very usable right after that. So, so back to the discussion of brushes. Let me just rinse this guy off. Uh, this particular brush, and I'll pull my brushes out here because you need to talk about uh, brushes. Uh, when we talk about watercolor painting, it is helpful if you have, uh, oh, wait, here's an example. Let's say, for example, I didn't want this little bit of color here. I can just uh, take a wet brush and just wipe it off. And there it's gone, there we go. Um, but in the discussion about brushes, uh, watercolor, uh, or for oil, and that is true, absolutely, um, and, uh, and yeah, and so, um, and no, and you weren't complaining, Carrie, you're wonderful, you absolutely are wonderful. So, uh, so look at this, uh, this, um, brush, if you would, this is a number 12 silver black velvet round, and what's nice about round brushes is they will hold a lot of water, and when you're working with acrylic paints, it's all about water. So uh, the, this brush, I typically, sometimes I use like for, for um, oil, I'll use synthetics and I will also use uh, natural brushes, natural hair brushes. But what I like about this particular brand is these are a combination of squirrel hair and um, black synthetic hair. And the reason that they do that is because the squirrel hair, that little squirrel that's out in the neighborhood and he has gone and he's given his life for the brush. <laughs> or maybe he was old. Let's think about, maybe the squirrel was old and it was time to say goodbye to some of the squirrel hair. But um, anyway, he's gone and he's, he's, he's done a noble thing and he's become part of this brush. So the squirrel hair brush holds a tremendous amount of water and these silver black velvet brushes, they also include a synthetic black that will um, have better spring and better resilience. So when you put your uh, brush, for example, you move your brush um, onto the, let me just get a little water and let's um, get some of the purple that we just were reinvigorating. So when you um, 
whoops, and it's still a little grainy. I'm gonna add a little more water. And this actually, this particular one is kind of a granulating one anyway. But, uh, so let's say that I'm just going in and, you know, putting some paint, see the granulation, or I've got, I've actually got like clumps, which actually is kind of a neat effect. Let's, let's work with it. So this um, purple, do you see that I'm able to load the brush and then get all the way across this paper with just putting one brush stroke on. And that's because this particular brush does hold a lot of water. And let's say I didn't want these little um, purple polka dots on here. Then I can just take them off this way, add a little bit more water, do that kind of thing. There we go. So when we talk about watercolor painting, then um, what we can do and uh, someone's going to start a squirrel reserve so she can pick up the little hairs. Oh, I love that. That's awesome. A squirrel reserve. So that way the poor squirrel doesn't have to give up his life. I love that. That's fabulous. That's so good. And then, you know, people could donate to the squirrel reserve. You know, really. Um, okay, so let's talk about a little bit about um, what we can achieve when we do watercolor. So beginning watercolor. I'm going to just get this edge of the water wet. I'm going to show you what happens if you put pigment on and you wet your paper first versus if you put it on dry paper. So let's say that I took, and I'm just going to reach in here and get some of this. Um, well, let's see. Let's get this one. Let's say I've just reached in here, got a little bit of this yellow. I'm going to move this over here so we can see. There we go. Okay. So if I just put some water on and I just, let's say I just do a stroke across here like so. Do you see that it just kind of, uh, I got the paper wet first and they can, um, yeah, a happy squirrel. Yes, I love the squirrel, the squirrel reserve idea. That's so fabulous. And let's say that I did over here on the dry part of the paper. Let's say I did the same mark. Do you see that um, we have quite a bit of difference and uh, what happens if you if you get your paper wet first versus if you have it dry and so the trick here now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you if I just use the pigment that it comes out of the tube and it's super super thick let me show you what kind of a mark I can make with that I can make a super thick intense line this is all with the same watercolor brush this, that. And so from that you can say, oh, I, I can see that I can get some special effects with watercolor that are hard to achieve with other things. And that's really kind of an appeal with watercolor. Um, and it's got a, uh, and we should talk about transparent watercolors versus opaque watercolor. So there's opaque watercolor and that's gouache. And then there's transparent watercolor which is something where you literally can see it and you can put layer upon layer upon layer um, when you did that. So I'm going to get this painting out that I did um, multiple years ago and I'll just kind of show you. I used an opaque on the top here for this little highlight and then all these other, do you see the transparent colors that are used in here? And within brushes, so I've got a few more brushes here, these flat brushes um, are helpful for just uh, putting across the whole painting, putting something down, getting water down in a flat way. So, oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and then you can use, an, these are uh, these are actually, um, this is a Grumbucker, it's a wash, um, golden edge, but it says this is a golden talcon. These golden talcon brushes are really nice for doing, uh, really you can do uh, oils, acrylics, or watercolor as long as the brush is always very clean afterwards. And here's another Grumbucker um, watercolor brush. And then here's another silver brush. This is a size 10. This is what they look like when you first get them. They'll have a little guard on them. Just take this guy off. And then they're going to be hard. And there's a uh, little bit of a, um, oh, thank you, Madonna. I appreciate that. 
and welcome Madonna. So the, um, you see that little tight little edge that they have on here? This, they put a uh, chemical on the brush itself and then um, that keeps it really nice for the first time that you use it, but when you uh, first get it wet, then it will just go to a normal shape. But these are pretty much a similar, here I'll take this one off. These two are pretty much similar. One's a little bit larger. This is a 12 and this one's a 10. But uh, you can see that these squirrel hair brushes, bless their heart, those squirrels. I tell you, they are working hard for us and we appreciate you squirrels. It's wonderful. All right, so let me get the lid back on this guy. And then let's talk a little bit about um, how to put or what to do with your paper when it buckles because that is a common problem in watercolor. Let me move these guys over here, reach across here. Okay, so it's a common problem in watercolor um, when you uh, have your paper, you do your painting, and then, um, and I'll show you actually on this one, do you see this thing here? Do you see how it's curving up and it's buckling and then you're like, oh no, what will I do? Uh, it's gonna be lumpy. And um, no matter what you do, uh, watercolor paper will dry unevenly unless there was an equal amount of water across all of the surface at any one time. So that's just kind of a fact of life. But uh, there is a way to handle that and it's easy and I'll show you what to do with that. So let me just move these out of the way, I'll get the colored, uh, the watercolor pencils moved over here. And what I'm gonna do is grab a board and show you how to do that. Whoopsie, oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm going crazy with the, let me get that out of the way. Okay, there, now. Sorry for the jarring thing there. Okay, so this is just a little masonite board and what you do is you take your watercolor paper and then you attach it to a board. So thank you for saying that, Chrissy. I appreciate that. So, uh, so how you do this, and my father, Dietrich Schaefer, my daddy, cut these out of masonite. So you can buy these things already, and I have these also on my Amazon site, um, uh, out of my shop here. These little boards, my father didn't make these boards, but um, like Jack Richardson, different companies make these boards and you can paint on them. And uh, some of them will have a clip on the end, but just using a clip and having the paper loose actually is not as helpful as if you actually attach it all the way down with tape. So this tape, uh, this is acid-free tape. This particular one is uh, Pro and it actually says that it's acid-free. And uh, it's important that you get acid-free tape because you don't want it to yellow your paper. So let me grab a piece of paper. Okay, I've got one right here. So you cut your paper to size, or if you got it out of a watercolor book, watercolor paper book, then you, um, then you can do that. And so you just put your, just gonna demonstrate how to get it attached to the board. And then just tear the edge here. And you might wonder, what do you do if, if, you, if your watercolor paper is already rumpled? Um, I'll show you how to fix that too. It's, uh, it's pretty straightforward. So what you do is you get your tape on and just press it down. And, and um, so these boards, you can have a board basically that, that also will, come, will take a full sheet, which was the uh, 30 by 22 size. You can get boards in all different sizes. The other thing that you can use if you don't want to use masonite is um, I'm going to show you my actual vegetable cutting board. If you get a vegetable cutting board, and also I fold the tape over so next time it isn't hard to peel out when I, just a little tip, next time I want to use the roll of tape. Um, if you get a vegetable cutting board, and let me show you. This is just a cutting board. You can also paint on a cutting board, but once you paint on here, you don't want to use this for food. So this is just, you know, one of these little, um, I don't know, what are these made out of? Some kind of a man-made material. And, um, okay, and then wetting the back. Um, yes, I will, um, well, how I do this is I will, I will paint on it first, and then when it's all done, 
Um, then, and Chrissy's asking, um, what about wetting the back? So I'll show you what to do with that, how you wet the back of the paper when it's all done, and then to make it perfectly flat. So, so there are ways of doing it. Some people will go in and they will wet their paper first, and then they will paint on it. And um, sometimes when you're painting on it, it's gonna lump up and it's gonna get wavy and that kind of thing. It will settle back down, I promise it will. It always does. But um, when it's done, it might be a little bit wonky. And uh, before you uh, frame your painting or you wanna use it, even bookmarks, whatever, you want it to be perfectly flat. And so I'll show you that next, how to, um, how to flatten the painting or what to do to make it uh, totally flat. So, uh, okay, so let's, we've got a, a surface now that is ready to accept uh, paint. So we can just use a variety of colors and let's just toss a little bit of uh, paint on here. I'm gonna show you, let's get part of the, you can get uh, part of your paper wet and keep part of it dry, that kind of thing. And uh, let me also show you a little bit about masking. So uh, there are some people who will not use um, oh, and why do you not want the paper to turn yellow? Um, well, uh, we don't want it to turn yellow because that means it's starting to uh, disintegrate. And if the paper is starting to disintegrate, then that means it's not fully archival. And then, so when people buy your work, they're going to want to know that they can keep it and pass it on to future family members, that kind of thing. So, um, so, uh, okay, so the art masking fluid is what you can use, and some people will be like, oh, I don't mask, I just, you know, avoid an area to keep an area white or light, or keep an area, um... oh, okay, yes. <laughs> okay, so, um, so what you can do is you can get this masking fluid, and so anywhere that you put the masking fluid, and you put it on, and then you can dry it with a hair dryer, or just wait for it to just dry naturally. And then you, um, and I'll just open this up. And what you do is you can use a palette knife. Here's a palette knife. And then you just dip that in, and then you just, I'll put a little bit just right here. And let's say that I had an area just right here that I wanted to keep um, a little highlight or something. And I did not want to have that area get any paint on it and just have it stay totally white or maybe I was reserving a color for it for later, I wanted to paint it, then I could mask that area off. And what you do is we wait for it to dry, and then uh, you paint all on top of it and it will resist it. It's a little bit like if you've ever done that in grade school where you had crayons and then you did a resist technique with a wax crayon. It's the same kind of idea. And then you put the paint on and when you're done, you just rub that off using your eraser and just go ch 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 and then it will reveal the white that's below. So um, yeah, archival quality is the way to go. And usually the archival materials cost a little bit more, but in the end, I, I think they're a little bit more fun to work with and the materials are nicer and it's always nicer to work with, with uh, nice materials. Um, and then just also a little discussion here too. Oh, and one more thing is um, this masking. Um, here's an example when it gets old and dry. It sometimes they, this stuff does tend to dry out, so you want to um, use it within a certain period, like a I don't know six months or a year. It's hard to revive it uh, once it's been opened. It has kind of a shelf life on it. So let's talk just a little bit about salt. Um, what you can use if you want to create a special effect on your painting, you can use. Um, uh, like you, like a toothbrush, and you can speckle, like I did here on this painting. I did um, some little speckling after I was done. I, I put, uh, you know, just brush right in the paint, and then went like that and did a flecking effect like that. It's something that's hard to do with like oil or acrylic, unless uh, it's just a technique or something that's kind of unique to watercolor uh, that that you can do. And then the other thing is you can uh, put salt, after you've put paint on, you can put salt on something. This is a coarse sea salt, here's some kosher salt. Um, you put this on, it will also suck the paint up in kind of a pleasing way. Some people will use alcohol also to, uh, to create effects. So let's say that I just went in here and was just gonna stick 
some colors on here. Let's use our yellow again. So I had gotten this paper wet. And uh, so let's just talk about the kind of effects. So here I'm, I'm getting a lot of water. I can go in here with the blue and I can just, you know, put little random colors on. But because I got the paper and it was quite wet, um, I can get that effect. If I took the same dots and I put them here where the paper is dry, you see that it... Oh, thank you so much, Chrissy. I appreciate you saying that. So let's say that I, uh, I just put the, the dry paint on like that. Now, let's say that I did not get the paper wet and in this dry area, let me put the yellow down like so. And you see that I can kind of fan it out and I can get a wash effect and I can add water back here and then let the water join up with the area I just painted and I can get a nice effect. Let me get that little hair out of there. A little Mr. Squirrel, you've lost your hair. There we go. So I can get this, you see this kind of nice uh, wash effect where there's more paint and you can always go back and add more pigment where you want it to be strong. We'll just do that. But now, now that I, uh, so this I did not wet the paper first and then we dropped the turquoise on. So now let me show you what happens if we, we uh, put just the yellow on and then let me just drop in the color. Do you see that that not wetting the paper made a huge difference? It was very similar to what if I had just worked on just the dry paper or the wet paper. Oh, sorry. If I had just put it on the dry paper, which is what that is, do you see that it, it does bleed out and fan out a little bit, but not as much as it does over here? Okay, so now let me show you what would happen if we were to do uh, let me get the paper wet. We'll get this little section wet. And what happens if we now, uh, let's just, uh, let's get a different color here. Let me, I'm just going to put a small amount of water on this dried paint. So let me activate this paint a little bit. There we go. So you can see that on the brush. And now what if I did... Um, a effect on here. So let me just draw a line and just let that blend out. And you see that it's very soft. But if I did in the dry paper, and if I just did this, to see that if I don't have the water on the paper first, I get a much different mark than if I wet my paper first. So we can exploit that and use that to our advantage in watercolor. And you see all these kind of wonderful edges we can get? I can now go back and I can add water if I want to. Let me just add water in between here and see if I can get a soften. Let's say I want to do an effect like add water on top of these little specks. Do you see that we get a different mark than we did if we get wet paper pigment and then drips on top. Now what if I did added water, for example, to this dry line? Let me just put water over the top. And you see that we get yet another effect that is different than if it was water first. So let's see if our, yeah, our masking fluid is dry enough now. Okay, yeah, isn't that kind of fun to see all the different techniques or different effects that one can get? So let's now take a little bit of this teal and let's just kind of go over the area that we masked off or we protected. And you can see now the masking fluid, they usually put make it kind of a yellow color. And Erica, do you, um, if you're still there, Erica, let me know if you if you ever use masking fluid. I don't recall seeing your masking fluid in your work, but maybe you did it and I didn't know. Um, do you see how the uh, this thing is like pooling up? And 
And uh, do you see that it's, uh, oh, and also do you see this wonderful effect we have of the, that kind of yellow, bright yellow, orange color bleeding in? That's what we call um, in art a happy accident, right? That's a nice, that's a nice look. So what we would do is we're going to just let this dry in. I could even add some other colors in here. I'm going to add a little bit of this navy. Let's say that I'm painting all around this and I have, you know, a little bit of this navy color, this Prussian blue. Get a little bit more of him going. And I can even just paint all the way across the area that we did the keep away on. And then let's say that, and Erica, um, oh, you uploaded a, a video a while back where you put um, paint in a car with watercolor and explain about masking fluid. Okay, I haven't seen that, Erica. I need to go in onto your site and watch that, onto your, onto your uh, channel and, and watch that. Absolutely. So I'm just going to stick a little bit of salt on this guy here. Let's see if we can do anything with salt. And so basically what the salt does is the salt is just kind of a, um, the salt is a tricky thing because you want to have enough water associated with the salt but not have it too wet. It's kind of an interesting thing and it gives some unusual effects that are difficult to get with just a brush. But if you see that, I'm going to just hold that up really close so you guys, if you can kind of see that. But you can kind of see here that the um, salt is doing its thing. There and there it's making kind of a little keep away area or a little snowflakey area. All right, there we go. Okay, so, so there are all kinds of things that you can do with the watercolor that are, say, unique or special that are hard to do with other, uh, other techniques. So let's just get this this area wet. My favorite is when watercolor is allowed to just be loose and free. So, so let's just get, and it just can kind of do its thing. It's kind of like curly hair, right? The blues, I love those blues too, absolutely. So let me just do a little speckling. I'm just uh, tapping the brush. So we're, we've got, uh, I wet this area down. We'll just do a little bit of, just kind of let the, the pigment do its thing. So here I've got, you can see I've got my dirty water here and then my clean water here. So when I want to uh, grab some water, I go into there. And then let's say, what happens if we were to get, uh... all right, so. Oh, now I got a, uh, now it says an error occurred. So I think that means, well, I'm actually not sure if you guys can still see the stream. I think that I think that <laughs> I think our stream is done or it's somehow stopped because it says an error occurred. So um, it may be that it's over. All right. Well, I'm, you know what? I can't see the stream anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and end this. But um, I, I will tell you again some other time how to go in and um, save the back of your paper. But I appreciate you watching, and I want to say thank you. And, um, oh, let's see. What does your chat say? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stop the chat for now because it looks like our uh, we lost connection. And um, for now, 